Hey guys, so I am going to tell you that Wizard of the Coast is like a lot of other companies um, that pretend to care about minority hiring and do not. So when I went to law school, I went to William Mary Law School. At the time, it was a top 30 law school, and we would have these job fairs in the middle of nowhere. Like St. Louis was the, the job fair I'm going to talk about, but there were other minority job fairs that were available for minorities. Now, for a, a white person, they might be like, oh, wow, you have more opportunities than we do, but let me explain what it is. Uh, my job advisor at William Mary Law School, she was white, and she kept pushing me to go to these minority job fairs instead of a regular job fair. And I think there was a job fair at the same time. I had to cancel the ticket because I wanted to go to Chicago's job fair, which was a regular job fair for it wasn't a minority job fair. And she wanted me to go to St. Louis's job fair. And I didn't want to go because at that point, my experience with minority job fairs, again, these are for lawyers and their data are always public, this particular job fair in St. Louis, the previous year, out of the hundreds of interviews they had done, thousands of interviews, and tons and tons of clients, they didn't hire a single person. There was not a single intern given because they have to release uh, the data. And why should I go to a minority job fair when there are no jobs there? Now you might ask, okay, why is everyone doing this song and dance? Does it make any sense? And the answer is yes, because then they can say, oh, we interviewed X amount of minority candidates. Unfortunately, we didn't pick any of them, but at least we interviewed them. Very similar to the NFL Rooney rule, where you have to interview a African-American coach for head coaching position, but no one hires one. It's like, what? <laughs> what's going on the whole points are the, the point isn't to interview them it's not to interview more african-american coaches to become head coaches it's to actually hire one to become a head coach right uh, it doesn't make any sense and the same with these minority job fairs i tell you as an employer i would never go to a minority as a minority owner i would never go to a minority job fair because it's just a scam it's like, it just blows my mind. Like, if I was an employer telling an employee, I would say, don't go. It's a waste of time. Um, now, I've been through some other job fairs. Like, you know, we're a small company, but we have a pretty big uh, local, I guess, a local name. And it's normal. Like, when you go to a regular job fair that's not a minority job fair, like, people ask to get jobs from that job fair. Like they publish, so these job fairs, all of them have to publish numbers, right? Or they should publish numbers. But when your number from last year is zero, why should I pay money for a hotel? Why should I pay money for a room to interview when I know that there, no matter how well this interview goes, there's no job at the end of the day? Um, why? And that is Wizards of the Coasts. Wizard of Coast is a minority job <laughs> interview. It's a minority job fair. You know, it's like Lee Sharp. Hey, you know, we want to collect all of these, you know, uh, co people of color, if you will, applicants, so we can reject all of them. Because like, if Lee Sharp was correct and they were wanted to hire women and they wanted to hire African Americans, they want to hire Asians, they want to hire people with diverse backgrounds, then why the blank order no people with diverse backgrounds at the company? Like if the objective was to hire people that were different from, that were not white cis males, why is everyone a white cis male at the company? And why are they treating the white cis male differently from the Asian male, which you can see from Amaze? And no one is allowed to speak up. No one is allowed to complain. Everyone just gets online and then it just reminds me so much of how people discriminate. Like, great, I got an interview, but you wasted my time, you wasted my money, you re wasted my resources, and there was never any job, was there? That's exactly Wizard of Coast to a T. I guarantee you they interview plenty of people of color, people, uh, women, and uh, ge different genders and uh, gender identities and so on. And I guarantee you they don't hire. Like if you looked at their raw numbers, how can 
the manager, the hiring manager of MTG Arena, say something on Twitter saying that he does not want to hire the cis white male, but then he ends up hiring a cis white male. What? Why would you even tweet that to begin with then? Like, it, it's just so crazy to me that they are faking, that they're so hypocrite. I mean, if Weds can figure this out, you can figure this out. There's something wrong. There is something wrong. So, um, you know, Jason Chan, Amaze, and it's interesting. You know, it is, ooh, um, the disqualification and all. I mean, I'm not going to get into too much because I covered it in a previous video. But would they treat someone like Efro the exact the same like they treated Jason Chan? Jason Chan, by the way, actually has followers. He actually has a reputation, and he actually has and can bring new players to this game, which is something that Efro cannot. You have Efro. I mean, if somebody like did it, and like someone was Efro, a white cis male, asked, "How does anyone know any African American artists? Because I like to buy their prints." And then the one African American artist that they could find said, "Oh, there's only one to four of us." <laughs> what the blank? Like, who walks into that? Like, Efro is something else, right? Anyway, uh, the Cube Spotlight was a very good example, right? Um, and it's just so crazy to me that a company that at every single turn talks about how diverse and they care about diversity, they care about inclusiveness. I mean, how many times have you heard inclusive? And really, in in their actual company, so maybe they care about that for the player base to make them more money, I assume. But for the actual company, there's none of that. And I'm just going to read you. Um, I'll read you some of these tweets, and I think they're exactly correct. Edwin Irwin, who Mr. Owens, I don't agree with many times. I completely understand those people who don't want to amplify Zberg's post. It can hurt them financially and potentially remove future opportunities being offered to them. That's kind of the problem. That is exactly the blanking problem. Okay? These efforts to get sp cards to spoil, which then it's like, how easy is it when you get a card to spoil? It's like the dumbest video, right? Like there no, there's no effort and you get a bunch of views. Then you get money, you become an MPL member. Isn't it weird that like the MPL members are not coming out? Oh, oh of course, their contract tells them that they're gonna be sued. They're gonna be breach of contract should they come out and support. And maybe that's why Gary Thompson, because Gary Thompson is kind of a loose cannon, if you will, uh, decided to leave. But the rest of them should be embarrassed. The MPL is nothing but an embarrassment to Magic the Gathering because of their contract. They legally cannot say what they actually want to say. They got to follow the company line. Pretend you care about inclusiveness when you actually don't give a damn. Okay, so like, this is the, Bert, the guy who made the article. This is his post with the article. Wizard of Coast purports to be inclusive and diverse when in reality they have a long history of racially discriminatory behavior, avoiding accountability, which is Wizard of Coast's best trait, I guess, through a culture of secrecy and fear. This is my favorite line of the whole thing. They are an unequivocally racist company. I dare them to defend that because I don't think they can. I do not think they can defend that line. They are a unequivocally racist company. They are the effing example. They are the real life example of a company. The reason that we have these minority job fairs is because companies like Wizard of the Coast puts them on. So they feel better about themselves. When in fact, all they've been doing is wasting my time. Like, at, so I, when I didn't know better, because again, I mean... I hadn't really got a job or anything like that. So like the job fair seemed like a good example of, hey, you know, you can do eight, eight interviews in one place. Why not? Then once I realized what was going on, I was like, I'm never going to go. But you know who kept sending me? My effing uh, career advisor. And I was like, no, there's no jobs here. 
Like, I told her the stats, hey, there's no jobs in St. Louis. I'm not going to do. And she forced me to go. Otherwise, she would, like, blackball me from, like, you know, getting future jobs, which I didn't get a job from William Mary Law School, actually. I did not find that job via William Mary Law School because I just gave up on that whole system because it didn't make any sense. Like, why should I be sent to a place which I know last year they didn't offer a single job to any of these very qualified applicants? Shouldn't I go to a job fair that has like actual jobs, but it's to pad these numbers, right? It's to pad these, my, oh, we interviewed a hundred minorities today. Great. Now we can say that we, we, oh, check mark. We did our best, but there was no effing job. There was no job. Like, <laughs> Come on. Like, it's so dumb. It's like, why? We went to a job fair and none of the law firms would give us a job. Why did we go? It's, I asked her this. I, I asked my job uh, career, why? Why am I going? I don't want to go. And to cancel my Chicago uh, ticket, which cost another $200, and that's crap. It's like such BS, right? The Chicago was actual real jobs. So instead of going to one that had real jobs, I, I was forced to go to one in St. Louis that the previous year, no one got hired, I, even at an intern level. I would never do that. Hi, guys.